r slash ask reddit what are some red flags of a bad friendship every time you're finished hanging out you feel worse than you did before that's a sign of a bad friend edit damn thank you so much really didn't think this comment had would blow up thank you to the two anonymous folks for the silver and gold holy sh this is so cool let's all watch out for those people in our life that don't make us feel good cheers or if you consistently put off replying to them, not out of spite or anything but just because you don't have the energy for them, they're draining you. Obviously not black and white. Some people are just the type that require a lot of energy because they have a lot themselves. But recognizing this has saved me from a lot of unhappy or even toxic friendships. My best friend is draining me so much right now. She's cutting and getting suicidal again and any time I tell her she's pretty she fights it tooth and claw and pisses me off. Now she's wondering why I'm ignoring her. Beach I'm not ignoring you. I'm just not up to talking to you at the moment. Because we have nothing to talk about except you being depressed and sad all the time and missing your ex who treated you like shit. And I'm tired of auto repeating the same thing all the time. Edit. I would like to thank you all for the replies and support for both me and my friend. I may not be able to reply to every single one of you. Because reddit doesn't let me and tells me you're doing that too much. Try again in 10 minutes. But seriously. Thank you all. Walking on eggshells. Constantly worrying if what you say is going to make them mad. When they can lean on you whenever they need you but you can't lean on them. Edit. Can't believe this blew up. Trying to read as many of your stories as I can and I just wanted to say I hope things get better. Sending a wave of love to everyone. This is my situation. I absolutely adore my best friend but she's gone through a lot of shit. So when something good happens to her, I'm so excited to celebrate it. But I feel like I can't share anything positive going on with me because it'll make her feel bad. It shouldn't bum me out as much as it does. But I feel like there are so many topics that are off limited and there's nobody else that I feel comfortable sharing them with. Have you asked her about off limit topics? I wanted to hear positive news when I was battling cancer. I suffered greatly so I needed cheering up. Online I asked for funny dog videos. I needed to get my mind off my situation. Being dismissive of all your interests and achievements. Meanwhile everything they do, no matter how mundane, is amazing. Right. I have a friend who is just competitive about everything. I'm sure it had a lot to do with the sibling rivalry he had with his brothers. But with me it just gets old. I was promoted to supervisor today. Open bracket. Steel fabrication shop. 3 second pause buddy. Cool. So me and so and so are going to start a company soon. Open bracket. Third year I've heard this. Both guys work part time jobs. It's laughable. Me. Okay. Well. I've got things to do. Have fun. You see you got a private message from them and your gut reaction is to start getting nervous or anxious. What is it this time? Today I learned reddit is a very bad friend. Reddit is like an abusive friend I can't quit. But one day I'll press that log out button and never look back. Probably when they inevitably make the redesign mandatory. When you call them out on bad behavior they act like the victim. Major red flag this one is. Ro, you're really hurting me with these baseless accusations. Baseless? You're balls deep in my wife. They act just fine whenever they invite you over, and then as soon as someone else comes into the picture, their whole attitude changes. They begin treating you with disrespect, just to try and act cool in front of their new friend. Edit. Jesus I was not expecting this to blow up the way that it did. You all got some shitty ass friends. Or you're the new friend and you get treated like shit because you haven't known anyone you can't possibly understand the inside jokes. But no offense right? My roommate hates me. We moved in together cause I was friends with our third roommate. The one that hates me had a friend move in as well. I became friends with our fourth roommate. And he felt like I stole his friend so now he's just a dong to everyone in the house. Fourth roommate moved from out of state to live with him cause they used to be best friends. But now Dong Rummate is moving in with his other friends when the lease runs out. Continually feeling like you want to say something but should hold your tongue. Loki feel like this with everyone though. Same dude. But I think it started with my old friends though. 
In elementary school we were close but by the time middle school rolled around we became more and more distant, and mostly everyone there started ignoring me, and later bullying me. Being naive as a middle schooler, it never clicked in my head, but even now I'll type a comment up and delete it because I thought it sounded stupid. I ended up finding new friends later but I wish I realized sooner that my friends weren't real friends anymore. Edit. Damn I guess this comment wasn't that stupid. Ha, thanks for all the upvotes. When one person is always right and one person is always wrong. Oh I'm guilty of this. I'm trying to improve on this. I just hate it when someone's wrong. Yes I know that wrong is subjective. From their perspective they are correct. And I can be actually wrong. Although there are some objective truths edit. Lots of good advice here. I hear you all. Thank you. Give us one example of something that happened recently. When they only ask you for things but never offer anything in return. They're just using you. I hate it when I'm blowing my buddy but he never gets me back, you know? That's why you should blow him off and find someone else. You deserve better. When they don't listen to what you have to say. One-sided. Major red flag. Flaking on engagements with you. And only talking about themselves without asking about how you are doing. Only talking about themselves without asking about how you are doing game finding I'm struggling with this a lot more as I get older. I'm starting to think it's maybe a side effect of people generally having less time. Being absorbed by their careers, relationships and whatnot. Mostly good people who I considered good friends don't seem too interested and can't be bothered to ask much about me while I'm constantly making an effort to probe about their life and interests a few times a month we get together. My handful of friends with kids? Ducking forget about it and nothing in my life could possibly be as important or worth talking about. People are naturally self-centered. And it definitely does get worse as people get older and have more going on. It's just part of life to a certain degree though. There isn't much you can say to someone with a career and kids to convince them to give you a little more consideration that isn't risking sounding like an a-hole. When they've always got to one-up someone. You had a bad day. Theirs was worse. Your commute was crappy. Theirs was worse. You got a promotion at work. Well. Something even better happened to them at their job that day, and on and on. I sometimes catch myself doing this. I'm not trying to one up though. It's usually just cause I'm trying to relate to their story by showing them I went through something similar. But I worry it comes off like I'm trying to one up. Then I try to overcompensate by asking questions so they don't think I'm a dong. I just want people to know I care lol at it. Thanks for the silver. This one time, I got two silvers on a post. It was awesome. This hits home. When they only talk about themselves and don't ask or take any interest in anything about you. Going through this right now, it sucks. I just want someone to genuinely care about me like I care about them. That's a one-sided relationship. Major red flag. When they embarrass you in front of your other friends and don't apologize later. Apologizing later is also just as bad. There's a fine line between busting chops and actual mean-spirited bullying. I love a good friendly ribbing among friends. But I ducking hate when someone is clearly looking to lift themselves up prove their social standing by putting one of the friends and the group down. So toxic and insecure. If anyone ever does this to you. Pull them aside at some point afterward and talk to them one on one about it. Tell them it really bothered you and not to do it again. If they do it again after that, there's no hope of it ever changing. Avoid as much as you can. I've gotten rid of most of the people in my life who did this. I was recently hanging with a person who randomly pulled this behavior out when she was around my close friends. That was her one way ticket to Knoppville. You don't look any better or cooler. I just see you as a desperate human. When they're not there whenever you need them. But you're the first one they call when they need someone. I knew this one girl a few years ago. She was very much this kind of person. She would come to me for help all the time. She was pretty dramatic and always seemed to have a problem. But hey, I'm a pretty helpful guy. So I didn't mind. One day, it was my turn to feel sad. I was having a rough day. So I called her. I don't remember exactly what she said. But it was something along the lines of figure this out on your own. I can't help you. I'm not going to set myself on fire to keep you warm. Yada yada. Some ducking friend you are. 
But here's the best part, later that night, at like 3am, my phone rings, because someone was feeling fat and ugly and they really needed a shoulder to cry on. Did you miss your entire ducking speech only a few hours before this? Now I don't remember exactly what I said either, but it was something along the lines of shove it up your fat ugly ass, you inconsiderate duck. Double quote. Always saying they'll pay you back and never do. Had an old D&D group that was like that, I had a job at the time, and had graduated while they were all broke students a little younger than me, so I'd cover pizza, or cook for the group, or whatever, they always said they'd pay me back, but never did, I never actually asked them to pay me back, though, in fact I usually said not to worry about it, and that I didn't expect repayment, I was just feeding some friends. And I didn't mind doing that, it was like they had a compulsive need to mooch and then lie about repayment, even though it wasn't asked for, ultimately broke up with them. The D&D wasn't very fun with that group, and as the saying goes, no D&D is better than bad D&D. Edit. Might as well just edit it into the original post since a couple of people have assumed this at this point. I guess my writing was misleading, I did not care about the money, and I still don't care about it. I'm just perplexed that they kept promising me for years that they'd repay me and never did. I'd understand if they accepted me saying nah, it's fine. And I'd also understand if instead they decided to repay me at some point. They went for a weird halfway between the two. Last sentence is cripplingly true. Either boring long winded shitty DM or idiotic group mates that either feel compelled to only make crappy jokes or are too dumb to play effectively. I'm scarred by some bad D&D. Can't accept responsibility for any mistake. Edit. Oh damn. My first gold. Tie stranger. I lost off one of my best friends because of this. We haven't spoken in 10 years. But I completely agree. Also happy cake day. When they don't remember your cake day. 2. When you overhear them making plans. Seemingly fun plans you'd enjoy. With your other friends. I'm antisocial but it still hurts. Asking would be nice edit. I'm probably the problem in my case. But this is still a red flag for normal functioning humans. And to clarify I do not reject them constantly. Maybe it was poorly worded but by antisocial I meant I find it can be more stressful than worth to make plans. But if someone else is happy to make plans I'd enjoy I'll happily come. My friend group are all out camping this weekend together. Never even invited me. I won't lie. It hurts a little. Just wait till you don't get an invite to the wedding. Friend. Hey you wanna come with us to McDonald's you? Yeah sure why why not at McDonald's friend. Hey man I got no money on me. Mind if you get me some food? I'll pay you back you. You h h yeah oh my gotcha and week later friend. Hey you wanna come with us to McDonald's you? Yeah sure why why not at McDonald's friend. Hey man I got no money on me. Mind if you get me some food? I'll pay you back you. You h h yeah oh my gotcha but you didn't pay me back last time friend. Don't worry I'll pay you back w. I'll write first forward a year later friend. Hey you wanna come with us to McDonald's you? Yeah sure why why not at McDonald's friend? Hey man I got no money on me. Mind if you get me some food? I'll pay you back you. This is Big Mac number 30. Pay me my $176.46. Stay away from freeloaders guys. I was a huge freeloader in high school. And I felt bad for it. But people would offer it to me. My one friend would say he would buy me food if I went with him. His parents gave it to him and he didn't care. I would've went either way. But I think he was just being nice. Or if I say I can't go out because I don't have money. They say they will pay. It's like shit. I don't want your money. But I wouldn't mind getting some food with my friends. They say they don't mind. But I think it adds up after a while even if I'm not the one doing it. That's on them dude. If I know a friend can't afford something but I want their company I'll pay and expect nothing in return. If they can't afford something and repeatedly ask me to pay and say they'll pay me back but never do. That's different. Also when you're in high school it can be difficult or impossible to get a job so if your parents aren't giving you cash what choice do you have? All your interactions with them are on their terms. Not on yours. Obviously, everyone's different. And so you'll always have to make some kinds of compromises when you do something with another person. 
Whether that's picking things to do that neither of you love but both of you enjoy, or picking things that one person loves one day and the other the next. But if you find that you're constantly having to put some part of your personality or interests aside in order to interact with someone on their terms instead of yours, that's not a healthy friendship, and that doesn't have to inherently be anything wrong with you or them, or make either of you bad people, which is why it can be so hard to break off a friendship like that. But if you're not on an equal footing it's not going to be healthy or helpful for either of you. Every friendship I have. But if I give them up, I don't have any. Sigh. It's not necessarily the worst thing in the world if you like doing the stuff they want to do occasionally. You just have to know what you're getting into. Not expect anything more. And only agree to do it if you're genuinely in the mood. When they don't give back the pen you once lent to them in school, they deny the whole exchange. I know you're out there John. Don't we have shame? There are like millions of pens made every day, and yet we don't have pens with us. Where do they go? In my great grandfather's attic apparently. When he died they found like 30 giant packing boxes of pens that were completely filled. If they talk shit on another person to you then pretend to be that person's friend to their face. Guess what they're talking about when you're not around edit. This is a general rule of mine and it obviously doesn't fit everybody. There's times when it's okay to talk about friends but there is definitely a line. I don't need you all to define that line for me. I only kind of agree. If they talk shit about one particular friend to you and everyone else in the friend group. They just actually don't like that guy in the group. If they talk shit about everyone but you to you, they're talking shit about you too. I know I've definitely been in the former category, even when I've said negative things about my friends. It's usually coupled with their other positive qualities too, and I make it clear I'm just venting about some shit that happened. But there are a couple friends in a group I'm eternally shit talking. But sometimes you still gotta be polite when in their company, lest you risk making shit awkward for everyone else though. Also personal experience. Other people also tend to have issue with that person. And, over time, they get phased out of the friend group. This thread hurts. No joke. So many things are applicable to people around me and even myself. I always appreciate posts like this because it is a sort of self check. Very, very clingy. Can't accept that you aren't best friends after knowing each other for two weeks. Makes you feel like you're solely responsible for their mental health. That's a real bad sign. This should be higher up. I overlooked this one and said friend ended up gaslighting and psychologically abusing me. As a rule of thumb, do they make your life better? If not, then it's not a good friendship. I came to this realization with a couple of long term friends I had from back in the day. They would never really do anything nice for you. We basically just hung out out of habit. You couldn't expect them to be there for you if you needed a favor. Even small ones. With one there was also constant ribbing. He'd play it off as joking. But it was closer to insults. I eventually came to the realization that these guys don't make my life better in any way. I can replace them with people who actually give a shit. This may come off as selfish sounding. But you have to remember to reciprocate and be a good friend too. If your friend needs a favor, and it's not unreasonable and you can do it, then do it. If you're always there for a friend and they don't reciprocate, then you're just being used. If you're not there for your friend but expect them to be there for you, then you're the one who is a tool. When you find yourself actually feeling relieved that you're not around them, maybe it's time to reveal at the relationship. They don't own any red flags. Comrades only. Look through all your old messages and tally how many times you've suggested meeting up versus them. It can be staggering even if you don't recognize it. Always insulting you. Insisting it's a joke. Getting upset if you say anything back. It might sound obvious but it took me way too long to realize what a problem it was. And even longer to realize I didn't have to put up with it. When they murder your mutual friend. Yes this was from personal experience. I would say murder in general is a big red flag. Nope. Just when it's a mutual friend. You're putting all the work into the friendship. Had one friend who I was really close with in college and shortly after. Were roommates a couple times for about 3. 5 years. After I moved out the last time and for about 5 years after that. I realized the initiating of hanging out. Even though we were in the same town. 
nearly always started with me, him RSVPing yes to my wedding. Then blowing it off was the last straw. My wedding was over the holidays so I expected some people not to be able to make it. But no phone call. No text to say sorry man. Family stuff came up. Pretty shitty emo. When they're constantly on their phone when you're with them but take forever to answer you when you're not. Hitting someone as a joke. I think there's a difference between tapping and straight out hitting. But you know when a hit was a joke and when it wasn't. Never hang out with grown men that intentionally hit their friends and the wiener. When you feel that their compliments are just an attempted emotional investment to get you to do something for them in the near future. You never hear from them unless you initiate the contact. One person is always the initiator, whether it be contact, going out, etc. This is not that bad, and can be a pretty normal social dynamic. People are different. In the end you're hanging out a lot so good for both. Not necessarily. Sometimes when this happens you wonder if you would ever see them if it weren't for you putting in the effort first. When you tell them something only to them, then later on, everybody knows about it. When you're going through a hard time and they distance themselves from you. I'd been friends with my ex since we broke up and she suddenly stopped talking to me while I was in a really bad place and she saw something that indicated I might relapse. I've been sober like 8 months, and she said basically don't speak to me again and cancelled our upcoming plans. So the reality was, I was just using the post as a way to vent because my last support system in my life, her, disappeared so I just needed someone to talk to, but I've had more or less the same experience with everyone I've called a friend. But you know what? Good riddance to all those people. If I'm around long enough maybe I'll find friends and girlfriends who don't abandon me. When they lie, constantly, whether if it's about himself, you, or situations, open bracket, especially if they are lying about you. They stop hanging out, or even contacting you, once they are in a relationship. You are drained after you hang out, edit, not drained in the sense where an introvert feels drained by social interaction. Other posters said it better than I did. It's drained in the sense that you give everything to this person in terms of attention and receive little in return. It's the friend who can quite literally only talk about themselves for hours and hours. It's usually about some trivial problem they've decided they want to psychoanalyze yet again. Bonus points for exhausting amounts of repetition and reaching years into the past to retread old ground. You are lucky to get a word on edgewise. If you do get a word in. Friend will turn that convo back to their interests whiplash fast. Rinse. Repeat into infinity. They only talk to you when they need want something they bring you into unnecessary drama they tell all your secrets they make you feel bad about yourself when you go to them with your problems. You only hang out on their terms. They manipulate you when you don't realize. Whenever you do something good they put you down and try to one up you. They are never happy for you. They only tell you what you do wrong and not what you do good. They blame stuff on you because it's okay you're their friend. Hope this helps. Do not allow toxic people in your life. I could go on and on but I won't bore you. Have a nice day. A thanks for the gold stranger. Smiling face. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.